Hey everybody, it's Dave Isaacs, and in honor of the recent passing of Grateful Dead lyricist Robert Hunter, I want to do a lesson on the Grateful Dead song, Box of Rain. It's the lead-off track on the album American Beauty. It's one of my favorite Grateful Dead songs, written by the bassist Phil Lesh on the death of his father. It's a gorgeous lyric and a beautiful song. It's a little bit different in the Dead's output. Phil Lesh didn't write many of the band's songs. And he, at the time especially, was interested in very complex and experimental music. And so although the song is using basic chords, the chord structure is kind of convoluted and interesting. And there's some uneven bars and things like that. So the chords themselves are not difficult, but as a song, putting all the pieces together can be a bit challenging. So this is a strumming lesson. Again, I'm not offering this as a transcription or an accurate version of the song. This is a way that you can perform it and make it come across the way that it should. So first off, we're starting off with an A chord, and I just want to give you the basic groove here. I'm basically just doing this. So it's a backbeat. Ba, boo, boo, ba, a, boo, ba, 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 ba. Notice the syncopation in the middle of it. One, two, three, and four, and a two, three, a four. One, two, down, up, down, up, up, down, down, up, down. One, two, three, and four, and. Two, three, up, four, and. Now what I'm doing is playing an A sus two chord. That's simply an A chord with an open B string. Now I finger A with middle ring and pinky because that's what feels most natural to me. That's how my fingers fit best. And so to play the A sus two, I just lift up my pinky. If you use one, two, three, as many people do, lift the ring or whichever fingering. The A chord's funny because people do it so many different ways, but just play it with an open B string and you have a sus two because note three, third of the chord, da, da, da dropping to note two of the A scale. Do, re, mi, mi, re, do, so sus two. We're not in the key of A, but we're on an A chord. So notice the rhythm here and also the way that I'm bringing out lows and highs in different places. First of all, one, two, lows, highs, bass, strum. One, two, followed by one, two, So going into a back and forth strum, now keep in mind, this is constant. The down, up, down, up, down, up. I'm just not hitting the strings every time. One and two and three and four and. Notice that I lift the finger going to the sus two. One, two, three and four and. So essentially pushing, anticipating the downbeat of the next bar. And notice the dynamics, low, high, less. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, strong, up, down, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and. Now, the verse starts on a D, and it sounds like we're in the key of D because we're going from this A chord, which is five of the key of D, to D. And you could argue that we are in D with a modal change because we have an A minor, a minor five chord, a C, a flat seven. But I really think the whole thing is in G. And as is very common with the Dead's chord sequences, it works in a modal way in that your ear gets pulled to different notes you hear different chords as the musical home in different times. So the fact that A goes to D makes it sound like we're starting in the key of D, but we're not, and we find out later on that that A is actually a two chord. Sneaky. Here's the verse. I'm keeping the same basic strum, except I'm looking at the rhythm now as a one measure of pattern. One, two, three, and four, and one. So I'm still playing the strongly accented two, the backbeat, 
and then syncopating and for and, more or less. That's the basic rhythm, and if you've heard me talk about strumming before, you know that I try to look at strumming as a foundation rhythm, a heartbeat with variations, just the way that drummers will play a basic beat and then play fills and small variations to move the song along. So our verse starts with a D, two, three, A minor, E minor, C, G. Good strong sense of resolution there. Now we start a verse again, D minor, A minor, E minor, G, up to A. Now that feels like a left turn, but that is five of, this next section we could call a chorus. I'm kind of thinking of it as a post verse because it shows up after each set of two verse couplets. But I'm not sure it matters what we call it so long as we know when it happens. It follows that 16 bar verse sequence. D, two, three, four, G, two, A minor, E minor for two beats. this post verse one. There are quite a few places where there are variations, but what I'm going to walk through right now is the basic verse structure, and then we'll talk about how it changes. All the verses do D, A minor, E minor, C, G, in one way or another. And then they're followed by another cycle, D, a minor, E minor, G, and up to this twist resolution, A, pushing us into what I'm calling the post verse, which starts the same way each time, D, two, three, four, G, two, three, A minor, E minor, D, and now that feels like a five chord, which it is, post verse one and C. D, A minor, and G. We then walk the reverse sequence again, but there's a twist here that follows the vocal. I don't really want to sing the song here because YouTube seems to give copyright strikes if you perform it, but with a vocal song, not so much if you just play it. But I can mention where the lyrics are. In verse two, we start with the, the D as before, A minor. Now, on feel your way, feel your way like the day before, we have really just two bars, but because of when the chord changes, it feels like a bar of three and a bar of five. It's actually one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. So the verse goes like this. This is verse two. I do like thinking of it that way because of the accents. Listen. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, one, two, and three, a four, five. That does feel good. Now verse cycle again. D, A minor, E minor, G, and here's that A resolution pointing us into D for the post verse. bar of two, D, and this is setting us up again, E of G, but now post verse two goes A minor, C, G, D. So we've gone through almost the same cycle, but with that rhythmic change and the different endings post verse one and post verse two. I would suggest you refer to the chord chart, and many of you will find it easiest to just associate the words with the lyrics, but I think in looking at the form of the song itself, it's useful to actually just see a chord chart. So that is linked below in the description. 
We are now at the guitar solo, which is one of my favorite Jerry Garcia solos, and I think I really need to go and do a lesson on that because I've always loved it. It's such a great part. But this is a new set of chord changes, solidly in the key of G. One, two, three, four. A minor, E minor, C, A, D. Syncopated fill, G, this is like before, so it's repeating the cycle. But now, change again. G, D, E minor. And setting us up for the intro. And notice. Do da da, wa da 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 minor, E minor, G, this is that open-ended resolution, left turn pushing you to make the D sound like home, this is the post verse, it's going to end differently again, D, so what do you want me to do, bar, bar two, one, two, D, this is resolution three, C, E minor, Verse 4, 3, 4, as before, so this is like verse 1, same verse cycle, and notice I'm keeping that same basic rhythm, 2 and 3, up, down, verse again, 2, 3, 4, this is the second half of the verse resolution going to the A. Verse 2, A minor, box the brain will ease the pain, G, love will see you through D. Now the coda, or bridge, whatever you want to call it, this is really a strong resolution. To me, it's the culmination of the song. It's the same chord changes as the solo. Just a box of rain, G. A minor, B minor. A D Again, just like the solo In and out your window like a mom Just like the intro And now we get something new. This is really the coda. D, just box of rain, E minor, G. D down to B minor. Only time we see that. G, A, D, E minor, G, D, E minor. That is an unexpected twist. So we actually do end, the song modulates so that the final section is in the key of D. We don't ever stay in D previously. The post-chorus starts on the D. It's set up by that, I mean post-verse. It's set up by that long A chord. But this time we actually stay in D. One, two minor, four, one walking down from one to six minor, four, 
four, five. And then D is one, two minor, four, one, two chord. G is the four, resolving, and here's our little tail. It's the Grateful Dead in 1970, and we need to be a little weird. A sus four, and we do not resolve. Now, like I said, I'm not going to play and sing the whole thing, but I will walk through now verse the intro through the solo. And just keep in mind, you should be referring to the chord chart because of those post verse endings that are different each time. And I want you to notice also, I am plugging in one little fill that I think works beautifully with this at the end of, or rather I should say between verses, at the end of the post verse when you're leading into a verse again, to play a little fill of B, B, C, D, C. Play B, B, C, C, D is a nice little fill that you hear there on the recording and it brings you beautifully into that next verse. So here we go, Box of Rain.
want me to do? part of this is just keeping the section straight and then also being able to maintain that groove and still have some of that Grateful Dead polyrhythm through the various syncopated fills and as you're going through it keep in mind that I'm really flowing with this as I feel it but there are certain things that I was playing consistently for example one two three up four and up down up three up four so really pay attention to where the syncopations are Pay attention to when you hear accents, when you're hearing lighter strums versus stronger strums, when the bass is being emphasized, all those details make a big difference. And I learned to do a lot of this stuff by listening to bands like The Dead that were so dynamic. And in order to make the music feel right, you needed to have those variations. You couldn't just listen to the same strum sound over and over again. It wouldn't sound right. So I hope this lesson is useful. I really do love this song. And please comment below what you think, and if you'd like to see a lesson on that guitar solo, let me know. I, I think it really would be fun. I need to sit down and learn it right before I can teach it, but I'll put that on my list. So thanks for watching. As always, my name is Dave Isaacs, NashvilleGuitarGuru.com. Please like, follow, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I will see you next time.